morning, everyone. Good morning. Hope you're doing well. You like the new look? I decided I was looking too old and feeling too old, so I went back to coloring my hair. I stopped that about 10 years ago. My hair's actually been white since I was in my 40s, but uh, anyway, new attitude. I'm young, I'll keep vibrant, I'll keep going. So uh, today is a review day, so partly what I'm going to do is just provide some guidelines of, of what's the best way to prepare for our exam on Thursday, Thursday morning. Uh, I'm also going to show what we should be doing probably next week as we prepare for the final. So this, we've got the test on Thursday. Like I said we got two weeks, but one of those is Thanksgiving week after Thanksgiving and then finals week uh, to finish everything up. So where we will start today is looking at the content for chapter or test three, which are our five sections that we've covered recently. Um, before I get into that, I'll just highlight there is a unit, the journey to the final exam. And uh, so once we take the test, forward that might be good to start looking at that stuff for the review. After we finish, we still have three sections, um, some t and, and again, partly on the results of this, we'll see if all three will be on the final, or sometimes they only put two of them on the final. Um, but anyway, we've got just three more sections, there'll be a portion of the final, but again, the, the final is also comprehensive, so it goes all the way back to the beginning, so it's a good time to start reviewing. Uh, and down in here, I do have, I forgot I'd already done this. I have the solution guide for uh, exam one and exam two. I have it for exam three, but I decided to make that not visible until after the exam. So on Tuesday, once we do take the exam, I'll open up that one. That was uh, probably spring semesters, uh, exam three. So it was a slightly different. But anyway, there's, uh, there, I've worked through them. Those are there. There's uh, a collection of videos and solutions to the exams, uh, to exam um, preparation. So part, when you prepare for the final, it's basically going back looking at test one, two, and three again. And then there's, there'll be a little bit for the, the next three sections we do, which we'll do over time. So I encourage you to do that once we do finish up exam three, <coughs> maybe starting over the weekend. Uh, again, because we do have somewhat of a limited time um, to go. So, but for now, uh, we'll focus on exam three. Uh, so what's here? There is, uh, for chapter 13, there's a, a section and it's got some videos and some class sections where I worked some homework problems back from when the pandemic first started. So we were completely online. So those resources are there. Uh, to assist, uh, they, you know, if you're still working on the homework or something, those might be helpful, uh, but those will get you through. What we're going to look at today is this in-class review, um, and it's a PDF file. I've posted this session from from what I did on my Monday class. I'll post this one recording as well. Um, and then test three review and solutions. This is probably a good place to go uh, as you're preparing, maybe after you work through things or if you get stuck on them. I've got uh, solution videos, I believe, to all of the problems in the review guide. Okay, so you should be able to go into here. They're, they're by chunks, so 13.3 and 13.4, I did work through all the problems in here. Um, and See, what is this? I, this might be the Word file. Yeah, so I worked through, so again, you can also just look at the solutions themselves. That might be faster through there, so I tried to do that. Um, so there's the solutions, then there's the videos where I, I talk you and walk you through it. So those, again, are a good resource uh, later on. Let's see, let me go back. And then, of course, there's this assignment down here to upload just a snapshot of you, your work through the, um, through the review guide. And again, it's just, I encourage you to work it all, but it's, as long as you've done some work, I'll give you the, the points for the quiz part. 
Um, again, if you've done well, you'll do well on the exams. You really can't pass this class without passing the exams of, of some sort, right? So we have that option where doing better on the final than one of the others will actually replace the lower score as well as um, I look at the final because it is comprehensive. What did you learn? So um, doing sort of a holistic look. So there's this opportunity for everyone who's still in the class and taking the exams, you can still pass and, and still do well. Um, okay, questions? One thing I also want to encourage you, because I, I get people that says, you know, I've been studying hard, I've been doing this. Sometimes I hear, you know, I prepare, I, I work through the test with my notes or, or the review, and that's great. But I'm going to ask you also push yourself one more step, go back later on and work through those same problems without your notes. See if you can do it. Now, you, you know, if you need to, go back to it, but it, it'll it'll tell you what it's like to take the exam because on the exam you don't have your notes. And if that's the first time you're working through problems without your notes, it's probably not gonna be as well as you'd like. You'll think you'll remember, but you won't. But if you try it, you will remember it, right? Um, and I, that's just from experience. I do it all the time. I say, okay, I've, I got this down with my notes, but if you take away my notes, I'll start forgetting things. But if I practice it without my notes, I'll know the things I need to keep in mind. So give yourself that, you know, that experience of taking, sort of taking the exam without your notes, that where it's not high stress, so that when you come in and it, it's going to count, you'll do better, okay? And one of the, the things I have done uh, to sort of help with that is on the review itself, I highlighted a few of the questions that I said, you know, really know these. And then there's more questions for practice, and it's not that I'm saying don't do those, but at least do the ones that are highlighted, and then maybe go back and do the highlighted ones as if they were just an exam, so a, sh a shorter version. Um, instead of trying to work through the whole thing, and then the whole thing again, break it down, and if you do the highlighted ones, it'll be, it's close to about what the exam length is, okay? The exam itself will be eight multiple choice questions, no true or false, just eight multiple choice, and then four, sort of the open answer where you're supposed to show your work and they may take you through step by step, okay? We have the five sections, so I'll kind of highlight those. We have uh, the indefinite integral where we started, just how to, which is the reverse, we were find, the reverse of the derivative, we were finding the antiderivative, okay? Which is sort of straightforward um, integration. Then we went on to substitution, which was integrating something that was the result of a chain rule. So we'll maybe look at a couple of those, but we had to figure out which part was sort of the inner function, and we did a u substitution. We had a couple methods. We took this derivative, we did the substitution so that it was a simple integration, and then we back substituted. Okay, so that's that one. And then for section. 13.3, that was the fundamental theorem of calculus, and we, we actually, wait, we got to that, but that was also the one with the Riemann sums. So I've also got, if you haven't already got it, I've got the program for the TI-84. I'd be happy to download it to yours if you'd like. It will help, it shows the visual, uh, not just with the homework, you could use it on the test. Uh, but we'll, we'll maybe work through an example there of doing a Riemann sum, but um, again, it was, it was to help us see that the area under the curve of the derivative curve is what the integration is. And then we moved on to being able to perform it with the fundamental theorem of calculus, which was to actually integrate it and then take the boundaries and um, get that area under the curve. And again, we always, if we have our graphing technology, there's a way to check our answers here. Um, also, the nice thing with integration, once we got, remember, we're getting that antiderivative, so if we take its derivative, we should get back to where we started. So there's this, there's this checking mechanism for, for almost everything we're doing in this. And then finally, 
we did area b between two curves, but it's really just an expansion of what we did with the area under the curve and the x-axis, thinking of the x-axis as the curve y equals zero. So it's just, okay, if we don't, if it's not the x-axis, if it's some other curve, we just subtract the two, take the one on top minus the one on bottom and, and integrate. So we'll, we'll take a look at those. But that, you'll see it's on this exam, it's really ab all about integration from where we started with 13.1, a um, couple other techniques that got added along the way. But in the end, it's just being able to take the area under the derivative curve, so we've got that technique, or to integrate. Okay, um, so let me start, I guess I've already started, but uh, just a quick few reminders of when we were getting the, in, uh, so the first one is when we were integrating and we had x to some power. And again, that in, that exponent could be a negative exponent, it could be a positive exponent, it could be a fraction, it could be anything. The way we go about integrating in every case Whatever that is, we're going to add 1 to it. The opposite of taking the derivative. The derivative, we subtracted 1. Now we're going to add 1. And then we're going to divide by that new exponent. So when we integrate, we would get 1 added to the exponent. Again, only when we had a polynomial function. This is not going to work. There's two special cases. Uh, and then we divided by that new exponent. And remember, there's always a possibility of a constant that, because when you take the derivative of a constant, it becomes zero. So there was that, that part there. Okay. So that's the main part. And if we had several terms, you know, five terms, we would do basically five separate integrations. So however many terms we do, we just do it term by term. Okay. As long as they're added or subtracted. Uh, we went into. By the time we got to 13.3 and 13.4, we were really doing the same thing, except we might have some limits here. So we would say we're going from A to B of something. I'll just like put x to the fifth. So when we integrate that, we would get x to the sixth divided by 6. And instead of plus a constant, we would go from those boundaries of A to B. And what this would give us is we would take change colors uh, we would plug in the upper end so this would be b to the six divided by six and then subtract when we plugged in at the bottom end so this would be whatever a is to the six divided by six and that is the integration we didn't need the plus a c anymore because this would actually give us the amount it gives us the area under the derivative curve. Okay, so that was like four sections of work that, to get us there. Uh, and actually, it's even the fifth section. We'll see that it just adds one more thing. As we, we think of having two functions and we just subtract the two algebraically, but the integration part is exactly the same. Okay, there were two special integrations other than this x to some power. Um, one of them was if we had the exponential. Does anyone remember how that integrates? E to the x becomes e to the x, right? This is the one that is its own derivative. It's its own integral. It's its own antiderivative as well. So again, it's very simple. But the simplicity makes it difficult because it doesn't feel like anything happened because it is its own derivative. The other one is the one that goes with this, is when we are asked to integrate 1 over x or x to the minus 1 power, so this is a special one, we don't do it like the other ones where we add 1 to the exponent. Um, this is one we just have to remember, oh, 1 over x, that's a special case. It integrates to the natural log of x. Because when you take the derivative of natural log, you get 1 over x. Okay, So there's kind of a back and forth. If you remember how you got the derivative, it will help you when you go to get the antiderivative or to integrate. Okay, so kind of practice.
practice with those, but those are our special cases. But these are the building blocks. Without these, everything else becomes more difficult, right? Because you can't integrate. But if you can do these parts, the rest pretty much comes together. Um, and we've got U substitution. So those are the building blocks we have. Um, I think we're ready to kind of just start looking through. Again, I can work a lot of these, and again, I, I recorded them, so there's a lot of options you have to look at me working through them. The benefit's going to come the most from you going through them, but again, sometimes you need to know a place to start, so that's what we'll use the rest of this time, is we'll go through and we'll see um, some of the highlighted ones, some of the unhighlighted ones uh, that you might want to take a look at to get you started. But again, after today, after we're done here, you're going to need to work through it together. Sort of on, you know, do some practice on your own. It's helpful to practice with somebody else so you have somebody else to play off of. But in the end, you, you'll need to want to go through these, I would say, at least once on your own without notes as if it were a test even maybe set yourself up like it's a testing situation and uh, take these at least the highlighted ones or some other ones and, and go through it take them review it maybe do it again uh, and again the more you do it uh, and maybe because I, I find if you do things three times like one time with assistance second time some assistance, but not too much, and the third time completely on your own, that's, it's by that third time that it starts hitting. And then you could do the fourth and fifth time to, to get it down, and, and you'll be good. All right, so indefinite integral. Any of these uh, look like you want to at least have a start of how you would approach any of these. about under substitution. Yes? Three H. H. Very good. Yes, this is one of the trickier ones. So that's a good choice to take a look at. Let's uh, get a blank page. So H. Integral three natural log of x over x dx. Here we go. So, with the substitution part, there's like there's too many x's there, right? That I, can't, I don't know how to integrate it. It's because we need to make a substitution to make it look easier. So. Here's the part, what do we substitute for? What should we make our, our u equal to? The what? The top part, the whole thing or just? Okay, so one of the things is, yeah, uh, whenever we have a number, just a constant, the three, we can always just kind of bring that to the front because it's just, it sort of gets in the way. You could also make you the three, and I think it would all work out, but it's like then you're carrying this extra baggage, so let's, you know, if we can, just push it to the outside. And then basically what you want to look at this, this is really two functions. It's one over x times the natural log of x, which is in the top. So if you split it off like this, We've got a choice, um, and if you, we had a couple of these in the homework, if you tried these before, if you make one over x the value for u, that doesn't help very much. 
and you, you get that on that first step because when you go to take the derivative of both sides, when you take the derivative of 1 over x, what you get is you get 1 over x squared, right, with the negative problem. So because that's x to the negative 1, when you take its derivative, it just gets messier. Uh, if you let x from the denominator just be the derivative or the, the u, take the derivative, you get u equals or du equals dx. That's also not very helpful. So, um, and I, I sort of thought through this as I was doing it yesterday. But yeah, when we make the natural log of x be what we make u, that's our first step. So is to is to give it a try. And this, like I said, this one is not always evident, but. If you did the homework, they gave you a few hints that says make this it, and then you see it works better. The second step is to take this u, and it's the right side, to take the derivative of both sides. So the derivative of u is 1 du. Okay, so 1 du. So I don't write the 1, but it's, I just put du. That's its derivative. Derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x dx. And see, now we, if we write it this way, oh, that's kind of cool. I'm going to maybe have this go away, right? Because that's I got that. So the next step is to get dx by itself, because that's the other substitution. We're going to uh, put this, whatever we get dx equal to, we're going to replace this. And then we've already said we're going to take natural log of x, and we're going to replace that with u. So that's the way the substitution sort of works. So. To get dx by itself, we multiply both sides by x. So x divided by x is 1. We get that dx is equal to x du. Okay. So then the next step, once we, so we, we set u equal to some part where we sort of think is the inside part. And then we take the derivative of both sides. And then now we do the actual substitution. So I'm going to rewrite this as 3. I'm not sure what to do with this 1 over x, so I just write it. Natural log, and I, actually I'm going to make one big parenthesis or one big fraction, so whatever's in the top goes up there. It, it's helpful. Uh, natural log of x, we're going to replace that with u. And then dx, which is also in the top, if you kind of go here, uh, we're going to replace that with x du. And when we integrate, we, we're really only allowed to have one variable, not multiple variables. Right now we have u and x, but we know we did things right because the x in the bottom cancels with the x in the top. So this simply becomes, the one's gone now too, 3 integral of u du. So if we did everything right, we get something very simple to integrate, u to the first power easier to integrate than that, right? So um, this part now, we go ahead and integrate, add 1 to the exponent, um, I'll bring the 3 along, we get u squared, 1 plus 1 is 2, and so we have to divide by that new exponent, so that's the integration, and then we get plus a constant. See, the integration part is very easy. It was all the algebra that we were doing to get there. I told you at the beginning, calculus is sort of the easy part. It's the algebra part that is the most challenging. So we do all this algebra to make the calculus very easy. We're not quite done yet, though. One more algebra step. We replace u with what it actually is, because we made up u, right? Uh, what is u? It is actually natural log of x. So now we can make this. And the 3 is actually in the numerator, so you could write this as 3 natural log of x over 2 plus a constant. And again, so that 3, if you would have included that with the u, it still would have, I think it would have worked out all right. But it also might have, you know, made a little extra work. But uh, in the end, it probably would be fine. OK. So that's uh, u substitution. From the original, and again, this was, I, in my, my feeling, it's like the most difficult because you've got to make that, it's the one that's harder to do it. Everything else is the, you just, whatever's in the parentheses, right? You make that your U and everything comes together. 
or with exponential, whatever's up in the exponent, make that whole exponent the u, and it's, it all works out fine. But with natural logs, this, this, this one in particular, I'm always trying to, oh, let's like make one over x, but that doesn't work. There's, you have to make the natural log of x your, your substitution. Is that good? Yes, sir. Does uh, the square go away? Does it do squared? Oh, thank you. See, I, okay. I get too excited and I say, oh, yeah. So thank you. It's u squared, so when you substitute, make sure you substitute right. So this is natural log of x is, yeah, that's u but u is squared, so yeah, it still should be there, so natural. And I also encourage you at this point, take its derivative so that you can see that you're gonna get back to where you started. Um, and I would have found that I didn't get back to where I started without having that square, because that, that square, the two's gonna come down, so it will cancel with the denominator. And so then I have three natural log of x, and when I take the derivative of natural log of x, I get one over x, three natural log of x over x, I would get back to, you know, so you could do just a visual check if you want, but do that check, uh, and had I done that, I would have caught that, yes, I need that squared there. So what I, I gotta rewrite that u, and since I had u squared, it's now natural log of x squared. But if you also provide your work and such, I would see, oh, you didn't get the right, oh, but you had it up there, or you, you had a negative up there, but you forgot to write the negative. You see me, I do that all the time, I am understanding. Those are, are minor, um, and if it's convincing enough, sometimes I don't take any points off. Sometimes I would just take a slight tenth of a point or something um, if it needed to. But you know, if you can provide the work, and I can see, okay, the understanding is there. That's what I'm looking for. You know, there's not any big, you know, there's not any project that's going to go in the the tank if we don't put the negative sign there or don't put the square. Uh, so as long as you've got the understanding. Okay. Uh, now, they also do these things with the shortcuts, and I'll just be quite frank and quite open. I don't use the shortcuts. I don't understand. They're, they don't fit me very well. I, I mess up if I try the shortcuts. Some of you may be, if you're feeling comfortable with them, go ahead and use the shortcuts. But the other thing is you've got to have that short, usually you have to have the thing to look at because they're so complicated and we don't have those, we don't provide those on the test. So I, I wouldn't use the, the shortcuts. I would just go ahead and use the substitution for this part. But if you're good, if you do know the shortcuts, you can use them. And for the work, just say you use the shortcut or I'll see you use the shortcut and you're fine. Okay. So that was substitution. Again, do some practice with it though. You can be guaranteed there will be at least one substitution problem out of the 12. So uh, there's 12 questions total. There's five sections, so probably most sections are going to have two questions each, and some of the sections will have maybe a third question out of it. Um, fundamental theorem of calculus. Again, these ones we just integrate, but instead of having the plus C, we do the limits and we evaluate them at those, any of these that you would like to take a look at. And then we've also got the Riemann sum, so um, that will, there will be a Riemann sum one on there. Um, yes? Which one? Sorry. The highlighted one, okay, so B, good. Um, let's insert. So we're going to go from 2 to 7, x plus 5 over x dx. So we need to integrate this. We have two terms. We have x and plus 5 over x. Uh, 
you can break it down into multiple ones, but um, let's just kind of think, so this is x to the first power. How do we x integrate x to the first power? Add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, right? So we get x squared over two for that part, for that first part, and that's it. Second term, and this one's a little bit more challenging, you might be tempted to think of this as 5x to the minus 1, but if we add 1 to this exponent, what do we get? We get x to the 0, so that disappears, it becomes 1. Um, so that's not quite right. Remember, this is our special case. This is really 5 over x, and so how does this, how does 1 over x integrate? natural log. So that's the one we have to kind of remember. If I take natural log of x and I take its derivative, I get 1 over x. So we got to think. And then that 5 is just going to multiply. It's a constant multiplier, right? So 5 natural log of x. So again, that one I would work on just recognizing whenever we have something over x, just x to the first power or x to the minus 1 power. That's always going to give us a natural log. You just have to remember it. It's not, it doesn't work the other way because if you try it the other way, you get negative 1 plus 1, which is 0, and it just doesn't seem right. And then what we do is we go from 2 to 7. Okay, so we don't have the plus constant because we don't need it because we've got boundaries of integration. And I'll show you also, these are ones we can double check with our calculator without a special program. It has it built in. It will actually get us the value. And so the way we work this one is we will first plug in 7 to our new function that we have. So we get 7 squared over 2 plus 5 natural log of 7. Now I know in, in um, what's our program? web assign, they sometimes will require the answer to be in a special form, either exact value or sometimes they'll say round to the nearest decimal. On the exam, you can do either one and you will get the right answer. Now, if it's multiple choice, you've got to be able to match the multiple choice answers, but as long as you choose the right answer, you're fine. If it's in the open answer, uh, I will accept both. If it's, because I, and actually on my exam, I work on both, I get the decimal answer and I get sort of an exact answer and I'll give, I'll give you credit for either one. Uh, and again, because it's the important part is you're setting it up here, um, and then the second part of this is we subtract off x squared uh, with 2 plugged in. So, um, so we get 2 squared over 2 plus 5 natural log of 2. Okay. And again, I think in um, WebAssign you would leave like natural log of 7 as natural log of 7 because they wanted exact answers. Uh, but, you know, yeah, we can go through 7 squared is 49 over 2 plus whatever this is. Uh, and then we're going to get 2 squared is 4 over 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2, so I'm going to go minus 2. That I could work out. I could change this 49 into, what, 24.5, um, but again, and then that's 5 natural log of 2. If you left your answer like this, that'd be pretty good. I mean, you maybe want to combine these, but you get full credit. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm also going to get the decimal equivalent to this answer so that I can check it with my technology. So I'm just going to plug all of this, actually, let me do it on the screen, so, uh, so we're going to second calc, just clear in the calculation screen, I'll do 49 divided by 2, uh, what was it, plus 5 natural log of 7, Minus, and I'll put a big parenthesis here. This was uh, 2. 
And if you wanted, you could put 2 squared over 2 so that, you know, make sure you got the calculations. But I think we had, let's see, just peak. Yeah, 2 minus 2. Did I have that? Oh. I wasn't careful enough. See, this is why I didn't distribute this through to here, so I should leave this parentheses on. So minus 2 plus 5 natural log oops, of 2. And then one more parenthesis so that uh, the second part is being subtracted from the first part. Let me hit enter. 28.764. Let's round it to three decimal places. Uh, 28. What was it? Take a look. 28.764. So that would be good too. And again, with this one, what we can do is we can check it. And what we're checking is we're going to graph, we're going to put in y equals the original function, the derivative, right? This x plus 5 over x. So the nice part is, we don't have to integrate anything. It handles it. We, we just copy in the right thing. x plus 5 over x. So we come here. We go to y equals. We're going to graph x plus 5 over x. And we just, um, we know we're going from 2 to 7. So I'm going to go with a zoom standard, standard window. Uh, should Everything should fit in there. It's from negative 10 to 10. There it is. Um, and then what I do is I go second calc. And we want to integrate, which is number 7, integration. It asks us for the lower limit. That's the 2. That's the bottom of the integration. So I just put 2. x equals 2. Enter. The upper limit is the 7. I hit Enter. And hopefully I get 28.764, exactly the same thing I got on the other side feeling pretty confident. I did it two different ways, and I got the right answer. It's multiple choice. I could have gone to just the first one. But again, I know myself and the, the calculator, sometimes I enter it wrong. So by doing it both ways, I'm going to be more confident. Again, use your time wisely. If it's a multiple choice, I might just, you know, and I see there's decimal answers, I might just go with this and come back and check afterwards. So I try to, when I do the test, I try to go through the ones I know uh, the first time and just kind of work them through and don't do any checks on them. Come back a second time and do the checks because that's where I'll usually find my errors. I don't find my errors right away because I just made them, right? And I don't, rem I think I did everything right. But when I come back a second time after some time, I'm more likely to find the errors, like the square that I forgot, so, you know. But I have to give myself that space. Yes? Um, like on the Not on the multiple choice at all, and even on the exam, if you, again, you, you can get me the right answer, and like on that, I would draw this, you know, if, if you're stuck on it, but you can at least do this. Draw the picture of what you got on your graph. I'll say, okay, you graphed it correctly. Yeah. And maybe start with that, because that gives you, again, know yourself what works best for you. I want you to do what works best for you, and I want you to have an understanding enough to, to keep moving forward. And that's again, we've got a way to check it with the technology. Hopefully, if you don't have a TI-84, or you know, the Casios have some of these features, but know how to use them. Um, see if, if you don't have one, see if you can borrow one. I usually have at least one extra. I got one, I, I'll have two extras with me. But the thing is, is if you haven't been practicing with them, they're not gonna be much benefit. Right? So I try to hold on to them. Just some of these batteries went out or something. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get you. But um, try to get one, borrow from somebody, um, and practice and do it over the next couple days. All right? So that's that one. Um, I guess we have a couple. We have 
some of these that are sort of uh, word problems that you basically just have to set up and remember we're just we're, we're given the part that is a derivative so it's a rate you'll see something per something so that you know the units will tell you it's a derivative that's what we integrate and again, the, once you get it set up the rest is it just falls into place like what we've been doing um, and then remember there's the the area between two curves and what I want to highlight is if you do nothing else, which you will do more than this, but uh, I would go back to the 14.2 that we did. And in the video, I worked through it, but I'm going to go to the slide de deck because it's going to be the easiest one. Um, it, I think it was like the, well, it wasn't the last problem, but this example that we worked through, um, it, the four steps that I showed you here, work through that work through one of them, uh, which is the two curves, step by step, draw the graph, uh, I draw a sketch, remember I did, doesn't have to be beautiful, but just get those points of intersection, work through that one, um, and you'll, you know, so do that one, and you'll, you'll be happy you did, okay? And then maybe there's some similar ones in, the uh, practice, work through those, but uh, do at least this part and go back and see how I work through each of these four parts, right? The, uh, you know, what's the integration expression, then actually integrate it, use the technology. So each of these four things, uh, do those and you'll be good. Um, let's see, where are we? I gotta go here. And remember, all of this is as simple as you've got two curves, figure out, graph it so you know which one's on top for the area you're talking about. And then take the one on top minus the one on bottom, it's algebra, combining like terms, and then just integration like we did in 14.4. So that's what I like about it. It always comes back to something that we have already did, right? Finding the antiderivative plugging in the limits, and we're good. And you'll see, once you, if you do well on this test, the, the next couple units we have are, are, are just gonna be simple. Because they're, they're, they'll come off of this, there are a couple more techniques that are not gonna be too much. And you're gonna have a good two and a half weeks to be able to review for the final, and you're gonna be in good shape. And even if you didn't do good on the first or second test, there's that time to study back, go over those things. All the videos are there. Focus on what you need to focus on, and you'll be able to do well. Okay. I actually only highlighted one of these. But yeah, so this is like the one we did in class, but it's just a different functions. Um, good to practice with. Use that same little template. You know, follow those steps. Kind of get the rhythm down. Uh, the other thing I, I probably never had a math teacher suggest this, but maybe listen to some kind of music that you like that has a little bit of rhythm. And I think you'll start, if you work through it, you'll see that there's a rhythm to the processes. And if you play the kind of music you like, that will stick in your mind a little bit better. You know, because sometimes those songs, you can't get a song out of, you know, even if you like it, it's so, like, oh man, I listened to it too many times, now I can't get it out of my head. That's what's going to happen with you with the math. You'll tie those two things together and you won't be able to get out of your head the process. You know, you'll have it down. You don't want to get it out of your head for at least not until after the test, but you'll do fine. But, you know, do some things like that. If you're into dance, maybe dance while you, you know, what, you know, the more body movement you do, the more you're using your brain. And if you're studying something, you make tracks in all the parts of the brain that will help you remember. So, Multi, multidisciplinary learning. What else? Anything you want. Yes. You got it. Yeah, because it's uh
think I can squeeze it in here. So let's see if we can do that. So we'll go B, right? Oh, wait. Oh, two. Yeah, not the second one. I, okay, B is the second one, but uh, that was the easy one. Probably a harder one that you gave me. Okay, two. Okay. Oh, good, good. Now this one is, we're gonna do a plus C, but they give us some information to find out what C is, okay? So we want to find F of X, we're given that F of zero equals negative one. That's actually what we'll do set at the end. We're not gonna use that right away. Uh, we come to the end, we want to find, and the derivative of this. So we want to find this function. Notice they're giving us the derivative. We wanna find what did we have before the derivative. Um, Okay, so the derivative we're given, and to get back before the derivative, we integrate, and what was it? It was nine e to the x plus nine. If you wanted, you could factor out the nine, but we don't really have to. Um, and then we're told f of zero equals negative one. Now notice this does not have the derivative, so that's what we've got. This is the derivative function. We're going to get the antiderivative. What, what did this come from? If you remember e to the x, what is, how would I integrate e to the x? e to the x. The nine is just a constant multiplier, so it just tags along. So again, it's, it's a very simple thing. It just, it's really just copying it, but just getting in, feeling that, yeah, that's the right way to do this. e to the x is its own derivative, so it's its own integral as well. Uh, now, plus nine, again, it's a simple one. Whenever you see a number, what you're gonna wanna remember, don't think about, I have to add one to the exponent, which we could do that, but it's just gonna be nine x because it's a, every constant when you integrate it becomes 9x because if you were to take the derivative of 9x, what do you get? You get nine, right? X to the one that goes away. So, and again, you could think of this as really uh, as 9x to the zero, add one to it, so it's just gonna become 9x, okay? So again, simple, but it's also the one that doesn't, you know, just, if it was like 9x, the first or 9x squared, sometimes those are actually easier because I know what to do. I've got a method, add one to the exponent, divide by that new exponent. This I just have to say, oh, it's 9x. Okay, so that's that, plus a constant. Now, that's where I use this other part. And again, you're, you know, you're doing well at this part. Again, it doesn't look like much change, right? The first part never changed, but nine becomes 9x. So the integration wasn't too much. But then when, what this is saying, it says when we plug in x equals zero, we get that y equals negative one. So this becomes equal to negative one whenever we plug in zero for x. So what we do is we get nine e to the zero plus nine times zero plus some constant, and notice now, we've got this set up, but the only variable left, or the only unknown is c. We will be able to solve for c, and we will have the full function. We've almost got it here, we'll just know what the constant is. That's what this part lets us do. So this is negative one. e to the zero is one, times nine is nine. Nine times zero is zero, so plus zero, it can kind of disappear, plus a constant. Subtract nine from both sides, we get that our constant equals negative 10. And so our final answer would be to rewrite this function that our function, actually let's see if I, I got a little bit more, let me do it in red down here, that our function, the full function is nine e to the x, which I got from right here, plus nine to the x, which I got from right here, plus not a constant, negative tens. That's the function, okay? So there probably will be one like this. You just do the regular integration. We've got the plus a constant, but that extra, the point that they give us, we use that to figure out what the constant is. Okay, yes? You 
use them both and you multiply it out. So you're gonna FOIL it out so that you have three terms because we don't, you're right, we didn't do anything like that. I put in, what do we do, is that a new substitution? No, it's not. It's a tricky one. Um, so the question was with something like E, right? We've got these two parentheses. Um, what you're gonna wanna do with that, let me, that's a good question actually, very good question. Um, what we're gonna wanna do plus three, x minus two, dx. We're actually gonna wanna FOIL it out and get x squared minus two x plus three x minus six dx. And then we're going to want to combine like terms. Uh, negative two and plus three becomes just plus x, minus six, and then integrate each of these three parts. Simple, okay, we have to, that, so some of these, if you haven't tried them at least, they could be stoppers, right? Because you look, I don't know what to do. I'll multiply them out. A lot of these two, uh, like five, uh, if we've got a, a, a square root, remember you're gonna want to rewrite that as x to the one half power. And you could go with a decimal, so if you're more comfortable with decimals, you could do it as 0.5 power. Um, that's kind of where I go instead of the one half. Working with fractions itself can be difficult. And again, it doesn't matter. We're not working inside a WebAssign. WebAssign might have wanted fractions. They might have wanted this or that. But on the test, I'll take any version. So decimals are perfectly fine to work with. Uh, but change the, de change the decimals to that. If you've got, uh, let's see. Where's the other one? Like a B, we've got one over three. We've got this part. The first part's okay. Uh, the first part we can see seven over X, that's gonna be natural log. But if I got three over X to the seventh, remember I'm gonna to want to rewrite that as, wanna be careful with this. The three does not go up, only the X to the seventh. So this becomes X to the negative seven over three, the three stays down there. But I see some people, they'll, they'll take the three x to the negative seven, they'll move it all up, but it's only the part with the exponent that goes up, the three staying down there. So you could look at this as one third x to the negative seven, and then add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent type thing, okay? Um, so radicals change to a, uh, again, to an exponent, and the only one we don't, do much with is if we have one over x or x to the minus one, we know that's gonna to integrate to be natural log. So kind of get that connection and get used to seeing that. Um, F, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna distribute this x, divide everything by x so that you have three separate terms. But it does look like one that might be like a u substitution one, but it's not, it's, a, it's one in disguise, just if you can algebraically simplify it, simplify it. Okay, so F, uh, divide each of these by X, and you have three separate terms, you can integrate each of those terms separately. Okay, and again, I, I have worked through all of these. Sometimes, if, you know, even if you know, you've had a long day, you're kind of burned out, maybe just in the evening, start watching the videos of me working through problems. And, you know, it's a passive, but it's, it's, so, it's you're picking something up, right? maybe try it and then maybe after some work do it you know however it works so there's we have to work with what we have and again it's good to be in the driver's seat and practicing but also that uses up mental energy we also need to recharge our batteries and sometimes we can do that with a little bit more passive type learning uh, of looking at solutions and maybe looking the solutions backwards and just kind of where we're not having to think so hard where we're given it, but we're, what we're doing is we're reconfirming the solution pass. That's a good way to learn as well. Um, get plenty of sleep, because we got an early morning class on Thursday, right? So that's always, you know, to be fresh and, and here. Um, 
keep in touch if anything comes up. You know, I'll work with you. But uh, do your best to get prepared. Uh, again, just five sections. Look over these, see how they're connected. Um, and the review is, is really, is a really good thing to be working on. Okay. It does, yeah. Because of its shortness and, and also most students who have struggled really bad, they're, you know, I've already withdrawn from the class so that those of you who have left are here, you, you'll do, you know, so this typically is your strongest one. Um, and then we've got things to deal with the first two. And again, also, I, I'm always looking at, I will look at holistically at that final exam. So, you know, just by the end, but you, you've got to learn to do it. It's also, I, you know, I'm not going to pass you along if you haven't learned it because that's, it's, it's just not going to be in your best interest. Um, but if you made it this long, study, we've got a couple more weeks. Do well on the final, and we'll get you. We'll get you moving forward too. All right. Thank you.